far, UVC light safely kills and activates, disarms, neutralizes. I'm going to include all the lingo. And for many of you in microbiology, recognize the word kill is very subjective in reference to viruses, but I am not going to add any publisher bias. Airborne coronaviruses. Now, it does not require an incredibly active imagination to recognize the impact of far UVC light that is actually safe to install in public places, such as movie theaters, hospitals, retirement homes, so on and so forth, that could be on when the place is occupied. Now, we're looking at 222 nanometers as opposed to the harmful form of 254 nanometers. Uh, so keep that in mind. A lot of people are seeing the article and mistaking it and utilizing 254, which is not good. 222, better. All right, so let's proceed with the research article as follows. More than 99.9% .9 of seasonal coronaviruses present in airborne droplets were killed when exposed to particular wavelength of ultraviolet light that is safe to use around humans. New research coming out of Columbia University Urban Medical Center has found. I'm going to skip around a little bit to get to the meat of the subject. I'm going to go into the background. Conventional germicidal UVC light, 254 nanometers. Wavelength can be used to disinfect un- occupied spaces such as hospital rooms or empty subway cars but direct exposure to these conventional uv lamps is not possible in occupied public spaces and this can be a health hazard to continuously and safely disaffect occupied indoor areas researchers at columbia university irvine medical center have been investigating far uvc light at 222 nanometer wavelength Far UVC light cannot penetrate the tear layer of the eye or the outer dead cell layer of the skin, so it cannot reach or damage living cells in the body, which is just so eloquent in how it's fashioned in reference to, I shouldn't say fashioned, its result in basically harming what is harmful and keeping safe, which is you. To proceed, the researchers had previously shown that far UVC light can safely kill airborne influenza viruses. The new paper extends the research to seasonal coronaviruses, which are structurally similar to the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. I am going to show you the viruses that they used in a little bit, but I want you to keep in mind additional studies need to be done specifically on that particular virus on its own to see if it yields the same results. Although hypothetically, it makes sense and should work, you have to validate first. In any case, the cool part about UVC 222 nanometer, a far UVC 222 nanometer light, is it's been shown to work with influenza viruses and certain things along those lines. So it can yield a very, very promising, safe uh, anti-pandemic measure uh, that can stop something before it could even get off the ground, no pun intended. To proceed as follows. As all human coronaviruses have similar genomic size, a key determinant of radiation sensitivity, it is likely that far UVC light will show comparable inactivation efficiency. Here we go, you ready? The researchers found that more than 99.9% .9 of the exposed virus had been killed by this very low exposure to far UVC light. Based on their results, the researchers estimate that continuous exposure to far UVC light as a current regulatory limit and safe would kill 90% of airborne viruses in about eight minutes, 95% in 11 minutes, 99% in 16 minutes, and 99.9% .9 in about 25 minutes. Again, utilizing the word kill, Subjective. All right, now I want to go back to the full study. Here we go. As to reiterate, as all human coronaviruses have similar genomic size and key determinant of radiation sensitivity, it is likely that far UVC light will show comparable inactiv inactivation efficiency. And if you look at the chart, you utilize, or see, I should say, the viruses that they used of comparable of nature. Now to conclude, now we're going to get this information from the full study. I think it, it says it best. 
Also, too, keep in mind, as always, DUI links will be there for you to follow. This is a full published study. So as you follow the link, you're not just going to go to an abstract and go, well, where's the data? It is all there. Very nicely done. And I always appreciate full studies being published. But to conclude, together with previous safety studies and our earlier, quoting, studies with aerosolized influenza A, these results suggest the utility of continuous low-dose rate far UVC light, 222, in occupied indoor public locations such as hospitals, transportation vehicles, buses, restaurants, airports, maybe airliners too, and schools potentially representing a safe and inexpensive tool to reduce the spread of airborne mediated viruses while staying within the current regulatory dose limits. Low dose rate bar UVC exposure could potentially safely provide a major reduction in the ambient level of airborne coronaviruses, including SARS-CoV-2. So there you have it. A really, really, really eloquent way of pandemic mitigation just by simply installing a UVC light according to specs in reference to this research. A 222, one that cannot penetrate dead skin cell levels or the tear uh, tears of the eyes, I should say, itself. In any case, gratitude. The links will be there for you. This is really, if you look at it overall, and again, without an active imagination, you could see restaurants, so on and so forth, the potential plethora of a basically uh, mitigation impact that you could simply do by installing the right wavelength light bulb. If it pans out to work with the current virus of the day, wow, what an incredible, incredible discovery this is. I expected it to be in the news, but somehow it must have got passed over. Again, we're after channel signing off. Gratitude. I hope you find this information of use. Please don't censor this. It has nothing to do with consumption of anything or so on and so forth. Keep it open for the public so they can reference it on your own. And eventually, hopefully, they'll create a command for 222 light bulbs. I haven't found that in the market as of yet. But again, without blabbering on, gratitude. Thank you. We'll see you all next week. Ralph signing off. Catch you next time.